The radial engine is a reciprocating type internal combustion engine configuration in which the cylinders radiate outward from a central crankcase like the spokes of a wheel. It resembles a stylized star when viewed from the front, and is called a star engine in some languages. The radial configuration was very commonly used for aircraft engines before turbine engines became predominant. Engine operation Since the axes of the cylinders are coplanar, the connecting rods cannot all be directly attached to the crankshaft unless mechanically complex forked connecting rods are used, none of which have been successful. Instead, the pistons are connected to the crankshaft with the master and articulating rod assembly. One piston, the uppermost one in the animation, has a master rod with a direct attachment to the crankshaft. The remaining pistons pin their connecting rods attachments to rings around the edge of the master rod. Extra rows of radial cylinders can be added in order to increase the capacity of the engine without adding to its diameter. Four-stroke radials have an odd number of cylinders per row, so that a consistent every other piston firing order can be maintained, providing smooth operation. For example, on a five-cylinder engine the firing order is 1, 3, 5, 2, 4 and back to cylinder 1. Moreover, this always leaves a one-piston gap between the piston on its combustion stroke and the piston on compression. The active stroke directly helps compress the next cylinder to fire, making the motion more uniform. If an even number of cylinders were used, an equally timed firing cycle would not be feasible. The prototype radial Zosh Aero diesels have an even number of cylinders either four or eight. But this is not problematic, because they are two-stroke engines with twice the number of power strokes as a four-stroke engine. The radial engine normally uses fewer cams than other types. As with most four-strokes, the crankshaft takes two revolutions to complete the four strokes of each piston. The camshaft ring is geared to spin slower and in the opposite direction to the crankshaft. The cam lobes are placed in two rows for the intake and exhaust. For the example, four cams serve all five cylinders whereas 10 would be required for a typical inline engine with the same number of cylinders and valves. Most radial engines use overhead poppet valves driven by pushrods and lifters on a cam plate which is concentric with a crankshaft, with a few smaller radials, like the Kinner B5 and Russian shifts of M11, using individual cam shafts within the crankcase for each cylinder. A few engines utilize sleeve valves such as the 14-cylinder Bristol Hercules and the 18-cylinder Bristol Centaurus which are quieter and smoother running but require much tighter manufacturing tolerances. History CM Manny constructed a water-cooled five-cylinder radial engine in 1901, a conversion of one of Stephen Baltz's rotary engines, for Langley's aerodrome aircraft. Manley's engine produced 52 HP at 950 RPMs. In 1903 Euro 1904 Jacob L. Hummer used his experience constructing motorcycles to build the world's first air-cooled radial engine, a three-cylinder engine which he used as the basis for a more powerful five-cylinder model in 1907. This was installed in his triplane and made a number of short free-flight hops. Another early radial engine was the three-cylinder Anzani, originally built as a W3 fan configuration, one of which powered Louis Bla Copyright Riot's Bla Copyright Riot 11 across the English Channel. Before 1914, Alessandro Anzani had developed radial engines ranging from three cylinders a euro early enough to have been used on a few French built examples of the famous Bla Copyright Riot 11 from the original Bla Copyright Riot factory a euro to a massive 20 cylinder engine of 200 HP, with its cylinders arranged in four rows of five cylinders apiece. Radial engines are regarded as being air-cooled almost by definition a euro so that it is interesting that one of the most successful of the early radial engines was the Samson 9Z series of nine-cylinder water-cooled radial engines that were produced in large numbers during the First World War. Georges Canton and Pierre in a copyright patented the original engine design in 1909, offering it to the Samson Companion a euro, and the engine was often known as the Canton in a copyright. From 1909 to 1919 the radial engine was overshadowed by its close relative, the rotary engine a Euro, which differed from the so-called stationary radial in that the crankcase and cylinders revolved with a propeller. Mechanically it was identical in concept to the later radial except that the propeller was bolted to the engine, 
and the crankshaft to the airframe. The problem of the cooling of the cylinders, a major factor with the early stationary radials, was solved by the engine generating its own cooling airflow. Little development of the radial engine was undertaken in Germany during World War I, where most aircraft used water-cooled inline six-cylinder engines. The German Obersol firm made licensed copies of the Nome and La Rene rotary power plants while Siemens Halsk built a number of their own designs including the Siemens Halsk Xi 11-cylinder rotary engine, which was unusual for the period and being geared down, so that the engine's total rotational velocity could spin at a higher speed than the propeller a Euro, which was still bolted solidly to the crankcase and cylinders. As with most other rotary radial engines a Euro with the crankshaft and associated internal parts spinning in the opposite direction through bevel gears in the rear of the crankcase. In World War I, many French and other Allied aircraft flew with Gnome, La Rene, Caligat and Bentley rotary engines, the ultimate examples of which reached 240 HP. By the end of the war the rotary engine had reached the limits of the design, particularly in regard to the amount of fuel and air that could be drawn into the cylinders through the hollow crankshaft, while advances in both metallurgy and cylinder cooling finally allowed stationary radial engines to supersede rotary engines. In the early 1920s La Rene converted a number of their rotary engines into stationary radial engines although most of the early radial engines were new. By 1918, the potential advantages of air-cooled radials over the water-cooled inline engine and air-cooled rotary engine that had powered World War I aircraft were appreciated but remained unrealized. While British designers had produced the ABC Dragonfly radial in 1917, they were unable to resolve the cooling problems, and it was not until the 1920s that the Bristol Aeroplane Company and Armstrong Siddeley produced reliable air-cooled radials such as the Bristol Jupiter and the Armstrong Siddeley Jaguar. In the United States, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics noted in 1920 that air-cooled radials could offer an increase in the power-to-weight ratio and reliability, and by 1921 the U.S. Navy had announced it would only order aircraft fitted with air-cooled radials while other naval air arms followed suit. Charles Lawrence's J-1 engine was developed in 1922 with Navy funding and using aluminium cylinders with steel liners ran for an unprecedented 300 hours, at a time when 50 hours endurance was normal. At the urging of the Army and Navy the Wright Aeronautical Corporation bought Lawrence's company, and subsequent engines were built under the Wright name. The radial engines gave confidence to Navy pilots performing long-range overwater flights. Wright's 225 HP J5 whirlwind radial engine of 1925 was widely acknowledged as the first truly reliable aircraft engine. Wright employed Giuseppe Mario Belanca to design an aircraft to showcase it, and the result was the Wright Belanca 1, or WB1, which was first flown in the latter part of that year. The J5 was used on many advanced aircraft of the day including Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis with which he made the first solo transatlantic flight. In 1925, the American rival firm to Wright's radial engine production efforts, Pratt & Whitney, was founded. The P&W firm's initial offering, the Pratt & Whitney A1340 Wasp, test run later that year, began the evolution of the many models of Pratt & Whitney radial engines that were to appear during the second quarter of the 20th century, among them the 14-cylinder, twin-row Pratt & Whitney R1830 twin Wasp, the most produced aviation engine of any single design, with a total production quantity of nearly 175,000 engines. In the United Kingdom the Bristol Aeroplane Company was concentrating on developing radials such as the Jupiter, Mercury and Sleeve Valve Hercules radials. France, Germany Russia and Japan largely built licensed or locally improved versions of the Armstrong Sidley, Bristol, Wright, or Pratt and Whitney radials. Radial versus inline debate. Pros, weight, air-cooled radial engines often weigh less than equivalent liquid-cooled inline engines. Damage tolerance, liquid cooling systems are generally more vulnerable to battle damage. Minor shrapnel damage easily results in a loss of coolant and consequent engine seizure while an air-cooled radial might be largely unaffected by minor damage. Simplicity, radials have shorter and stiffer crankshafts, 
a single bank radial needing only two crankshaft bearings as opposed to the seven required for a liquid-cooled six-cylinder inline engine of similar stiffness. Reliability The shorter crankshaft also produces less vibration and hence higher reliability through reduced wear and fatigue. Smooth running It is typically easier to achieve smooth running with a radial engine. Cons Cooling while a single bank radial permits all cylinders to be cooled equally, the same is not true for multi-row engines where the rear cylinders can be affected by the heat coming off the front row, and air flow being masked. Drag, having the cylinders exposed to the air flow increases drag considerably. The answer was the addition of specially designed cowlings with baffles to force the air between the cylinders. The first effective drag reducing cowling that didn't impair engine cooling was the British Town Ring or Drag Ring, which formed a narrow band around the engine covering the cylinder heads, not only reducing drag, but adding a small amount of thrust. The National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics studied the problem, developing the NACA cowling which further reduced drag, increased thrust and improved cooling. Nearly all aircraft radial engines since have used NACA type cowlings. The thrust generated by both the towned ring and the NACA cowling was due to the Meredith effect, whereby the heat added to the air being forced through the ducts between the cylinders expanded the exhaust in cooling air, producing thrust when forced through a nozzle. The same effect was also put to use in the radiators of several aircraft that used liquid-cooled engines such as the Spitfire and Mustang. Because radial engines are often wider than similar inlines or Vs. It is more difficult to design an aircraft to minimize cross-sectional area, a major cause of drag, although by the beginning of the Second World War, this disadvantage had largely disappeared as aircraft sizes increased, and multi-row radials increased the power produced in relation to the cross-sectional area. In the case of the QCJ7W, the issue of aerodynamic drag can be mostly or completely negated if the engine is utilized in the pusher configuration instead of the conventional puller configuration. Power Because each cylinder on a radial engine has its own head, it is impractical to use a multivalve valve train on a radial engine. Therefore, almost all radial engines use a two-valve pushrod type valve train which may result in less power for a given displacement than multivalve inline engines. The limitations of the poppet valve were largely overcome by the development of the sleeve valve, but at the cost of increased complexity and maintenance costs and reduced reliability. Visibility Pilot visibility may be poorer due to the width of the engine on single-engine aircraft, although tight-fitting cowlings helped reduce this factor somewhat. Equivalent inline engines often resulted in overly long noses, which similarly impaired visibility directly forward. Installation it is more difficult to ensure adequate cooling air in a buried engine installation or with pusher configurations. Size The smallest classes of radial engines, with three and five cylinders, are very rough running and unreliable when compared to equivalent four cylinder inline or horizontally opposed engines, which have been more popular for light aircraft as a result. While inline liquid cooled engines continued to be common in new designs until late in World War II. Radial engines dominated afterwards until overtaken by jet engines, with the late war Hawker Sea Fury and Grumman Barkat, two of the fastest production piston engined aircraft ever built, using radial engines. Factors influencing the choice of radial over inline were reliability and simplicity in maintenance, as well as high power to weight ratios. Multi row radials Originally, radial engines had one row of cylinders but as engine sizes increased it became necessary to add extra rows. The first known radial configuration engine to ever use a twin-row design was the 160 HP Nami double lambda rotary engine of 1912, designed as a 14-cylinder twin-row version of the firm's 80 HP lambda single-row seven-cylinder rotary. Only the German Obrussel UE clone of the double lambda reproducing the known double lambda's twin-row design before the end of World War I. Two row designs began to appear in large numbers during the 1930s, when aircraft size and weight grew to the point where single row engines of the required power were simply too large to be practical. Two row designs often had cooling problems with the rear bank of cylinders, but a variety of baffles and fins were introduced that largely eliminated these problems. The downside was a relatively large frontal area that had to be left open to provide enough airflow, 
which increased the amount of drag. This led to significant arguments in the industry in the late 1930s about the possibility of using radials for high-speed aircraft like modern fighters. The solution was introduced with the BMW 801 14-cylinder twin-row radial. Kurt Tank designed a new cooling system for this engine that used a high-speed fan to blow compressed air into channels that carry air to the middle of the banks, where a series of baffles directed the air over all of the cylinders. This allowed the cowling to be tightly fit around the engine, reducing drag, while still providing enough cooling air to the rear to keep the engine working well. This basic concept was soon copied by many other manufacturers, and many late WWII aircraft returned to the radial design as new and much larger designs began to be introduced. Examples include the Bristol Centaurus on the Hawker Sea Fury or the Schwitz of Ash 82 in the Lavochkin La 7. For even greater power, adding further rows was considered too difficult to consider practically due to the problems of providing the required air flow to the rear banks. Larger engines were designed, but these generally used water cooling to address these problems, although this greatly increased the complexity of the designs and eliminated some of the advantage to the radial air-cooled design. One example of this concept is the BMW 803, which never entered service. A major study into the airflow around radials using wind tunnels and other systems was carried out in the U.S., and demonstrated that ample airflow was available through careful design. This led to the R4360 which is 28 cylinders arranged in a four-row corn cob configuration. The R4360 saw service on large American aircraft in the post-World War II period. The U.S. and Soviet Union continued experiments with larger radials, but the UK abandoned such designs in favor of newer versions of the Centaurus and rapid movement to the use of turboprops, which easily exceeded radials in power without the weight or complexity. Large radials continued to be built for other uses though, although they are no longer common. One example is the like the Zvizda diesel boat engine series with 56 cylinders or 112 cylinders in 8 or 16 rows of 7 cylinders each displacing 383 liters and producing 10,000 hp. These were used on fast attack craft, such as OSA-class missile boats. Modern radials A number of companies continue to build radials today. Vida Neuf produces the M14P radial of 360 Euro 450 HP is used on Yakovlev and Sukhoi aerobatic aircraft. The M14P is also used by builders of home-built aircraft, such as the Culp Special, and Culp Sop with Pup, Pitts S12 Monster, and the Murphy Moose. 110 HP 7-cylinder and 150 HP 9-cylinder engines are available from Australia's Roke Engineering. HCI Aviation offers the A185 cylinder, and A227 cylinder, available ready to fly, and as a build-it-yourself kit. Werner Motor of the Czech Republic now builds several radial engines ranging in power from 25 to 150 HP. Miniature radial engines for model airplanes are available from OS Engines, Saito Siyasakwis Ho of Japan and Shimaias Huang of China, and Evolution and Technopower in the USA. Diesel radials. While most radial engines have been produced for gasoline, there have been diesel radial engines. Two major advantages favor diesel engines are Euro lower fuel consumption and reduced fire risk. Packard designed and built a 9 cylinder 980 cubic inch displacement diesel radial aircraft engine, the 225 horsepower drive 980, in 1928. On May 28, 1931, a drive 980 powered Belanca CH300, with 481 gallons of fuel, piloted by Walter Edwin Lees and Frederick Brossi, set a record for staying aloft for 84 hours and 32 minutes without being refueled. This record stood for 55 years until broken by the Rutan Voyager. The experimental Bristol Phoenix of 1928 to Euro 1932 was successfully flight tested in a Westland Wapiti and set altitude records in 1934 that lasted until World War II. In 1932 the French company Caligate developed the 14D, a 14-cylinder two-stroke diesel radial engine. After a series of improvements, in 1938 the 14F2 model produced 520 HP at 1910 rpm's cruise power, 
with a power-to-weight ratio near that of contemporary gasoline engines and a specific fuel consumption of roughly 80% that for an equivalent gasoline engine. During WWII the research continued, but no mass production occurred because of the Nazi occupation. By 1943 the engine had grown to produce over 1,000 HP with a turbocharger. After the war, the Kaligat company was integrated in the Snekma company and had plans for a 32-cylinder diesel engine of 4,000 HP, but in 1947 the company abandoned piston engine development in favor of the emerging turbine engines. The Nordberg Manufacturing Company of the United States developed and produced a series of large two-stroke radial diesel engines from the late 1940s for electrical production, primarily at aluminium smelters and for pumping water. They differed from most radials in that they had an even number of cylinders in a single bank and an unusual double master connecting rod. Variants were built that could be run on either diesel oil or gasoline or mixtures of both. A number of powerhouse installations utilizing large numbers of these engines were made in the U.S., compressed air radial engines, a number of radial motors operating on compressed air have been designed, mostly for use in model airplanes and in gas compressors. Use in tanks, in the years leading up to World War II, as the need for armored vehicles was realized, designers were faced with the problem of how to power the vehicles, and turned to using aircraft engines among them radial types. The radial aircraft engines provided greater power-to-weight ratios and were more reliable than conventional inline vehicle engines available at the time. This reliance had a downside though, if the engines were mounted vertically, as in the M3 Lee and M4 Sherman, their comparatively large diameter gave the tank a higher silhouette than designs using inline engines. The Continental A670 a seven-cylinder radial aero engine which first flew in 1931, became a widely used tank power plant, being installed in the M1 combat car, M2 light tank, M3 Stewart, M3 Lee, LVT2 water buffalo. The Gyberson T1020, a nine-cylinder radial diesel aero engine, was used in the M1A1E1, while the Continental A975 saw service in the M4 Sherman, M7 Priest. M18 Hellcat tank destroyer, and the M44 self-propelled howitzer. Model radial engines, a number of multi-cylinder four-stroke model engines have been commercially available in a radial configuration, beginning with the Japanese OS Max firm's FR5-305 cylinder, 3.0 ku in displacement series radial in 1986. The American Technopower firm had made smaller displacement 5- and 7-cylinder model radial engines as early as 1976, but the OS firm's engine was the first mass-produced radial engine design in aeromodeling history. The rival Saito Siyasakwa's Ho firm in Japan has since produced a similarly sized 5-cylinder radial 4-stroke model engine of their own as a direct rival to the OS design with Saito also creating a trio of three-cylinder radial engines ranging from 0.90 ku in to 4.50 ku in. In displacement, also all now available in spark ignition format up to 84 cm 3 displacement for use with gasoline. The German Seidel firm formerly made both seven- and nine-cylinder large radio control model radial engines, mostly for glow plug ignition, with an experimental 14-cylinder twin-row radial being tried out, the American Evolution firm now sells the Seidel-designed radials, with their manufacturing being done in India. See also, list of aircraft engines, rotary engine, swashplate engine, Kuwauza turbine, Wankel engine, references. External links, Kutaway radial engine in operation video on YouTube.